and and uh, i wish everyone the wishes for everyone so you can mute your mics for some time and uh, during q and a session you can take it up and today we have two important topics one we have just completed about the solar and uh, other one is uh, rain water harvesting this is the need for our uh, uh, once the thought was raised immediately I approached vijay sir vijay sir is the number one in uh, rain water uh, in india he is uh, uh, having a lot of potentials and uh, they are into research development okay. and, uh, they are doing lot of projects i introduced mr vijay sir okay. to you and he is the director of uh, farmland harvesting systems he is going to give an idea about the modern rainwater harvesting so we are not interested by not interested. these days and uh, water is the biggest issue so how we can become as mr srinivas will you mute your mic please mr yes. srinivas yeah yes mute and uh, this is very much indeed required for the need for our and everyone is fighting for water and uh, they are uh, having a lot of issues means uh, problems they are not able to get basic things uh, means uh, water is a important element in everyone's life without water we can't live any building without water and without electricity is dead so he is helping a lot of communities by harvesting the water uh, so we uh, thought of in the world environment day we thought we should do something appropriate by giving education to the people so uh, the sir has immediately accepted our request and uh, his uh, firm name is called farmland uh, rainwater harvesting systems and uh, they are doing lot of projects in all over india for the industries for the government especially government lot of projects they are into uh, next uh, one hour sir will be giving you details on the how we can effectively save the water conserve the water yes sir welcome to our session sir thank you thank you so much can i start sir yes sir you can start yes. the participants will ask yes, questions later no no problem sir no problem absolutely no problem happy evening everybody as you all know that today india is a water starved country Though we get an average annual rainfall of 1,170 mm, still there is shortage of water. In the year 1947, when we got independence, with 30 crores of population, average we had about 5,000 meter cube of water availability per person. Today, with the increase of the population, our availability of the water has gone down as low as 1,500 meter cube per year. This means to say that anything below this will be a lot of distress. India is already a water starved country. Here we are at a crucial junction now. If at all anything below this will be in a huge problem. Today it's a point has come where we all join hand together to reuse the rainwater, to reduce our usage of water. So that you know we make India water self-sufficient. In India, we have always worshipped water. Here, Jal is Jagdish. Around the world, everybody is talking of saving water today. But they say, according to the survey done, out of about 17 countries in the world will face a severe water crisis. And it is very unfortunate that India is one among the top five countries. Every year, we are extracting one and a half times more the water that we are recharging. With so much availability of the rainfall at 1170 mm, still we are you know, facing a huge shortage of water. They say that all dams, all ponds, all lakes, well, and even the percolation all put together, we are able to save only about 35% of the water that falls on the earth. Rest all is going as waste and joining the sea. We are extracting so much water, 65% of our water dependency is on the groundwater. Today, you'll be surprised to know that you know the borewell depth has gone below 1500 to 1800 feet. 
this has caused lot of distress you have seen lot of suicides happening in farms because to drill this kind of 1500 feet bore wells the drilling cost and the pump cost you know each bore well will cost you you know around four to five lakh rupees imagine after you drill if these bore wells dry up what is the fate of the farmer uh, let us take example of karnataka here out of the every 10 bore wells drill six bore wells don't get water at all during the drilling also during the drilling time only they are dried out of the four bore wells where we get water within one year the other two bore wells fail so the it's the strike rate of the bore well is hardly 20 percent when the cost of drilling the bore well is around four to five lakh it is coming and if the strike rate rate is only 20 percent imagine what is the state today on an average it rains about 45 days in india in 45 days we get about 90 percent of our rainfall in india the majority of the water you know everywhere in the world also the majority of the water is used for agriculture so this is one uh, place where we'll have to look for a lot of innovative uh, things to save water to you know reuse and recharge the water you know where uh, we have to plan of recharging their bore wells construction of the ponds and storage of the waters by anekattos you know and uh, percolation of the water into the ground just to give you an example how important how we can if we all join together how the things can be changed whenever we think of water to us israel comes in front of us because israel was found in year 1935 two third of its land is you know dry or at least less uh, rain zone one third is a moshi land on an average they receive only 100 mm of rainfall whereas we receive 1170 mm of rainfall they just receive 100 mm of rainfall with their innovative technology to save rainwater to reuse and reduce water they have enough and more water today they are with surplus water wherein they are able to supply water to jordan and syria whereas with so much of rainfall here you know we are still you know you know searching for water where is the disconnect happening why when rainwater is such a wonderful thing why is that people are not adopting to the rainwater just to take the example what is the potential of the rainfall i just take the example of bangalore and explain you ki how much is the potential of rainwater in bangalore we get water from kaveri from krs from about 108 kilometers the bangalore uh, we get water to bangalore every day they supply about 1250 mld of water and apart from that we uh, they say that we uh, you know extract about more than 450 to 500 uh, million liters of water from the ground so about bangalore's consumption today is about 1600 to 1650 mld of water they spend about 1.3 crore rupees on electricity bill alone to pump this water at the height of 1000 feet to bangalore now to tell you the importance of the rainwater if at all just theoretically assume that you know we are able to cover bangalore with a plastic sheet and the amount of the water rainwater that falls on it is collected stored and reused you will not believe when i tell you you know without any kaveri we will be able to supply 3000 mld of water double the water what we are supplying today for 365 days that is the potential of water here in bangalore we have got many houses wherein you know they are just using rainwater they don't have got any of the connections from the bwssp or from any borewell they have got enough and surplus water there if you know they can leave we also can leave just an area of just 1000 square feet a small house by 30 by 40 a 1200 square feet roof area with bangalore's rainfall you get about 1 lakh liters of precious clean distilled water so imagine the amount of the water, colossal quantity of the water falling on the every house. There are estimated that we have about more than 22 lakh houses in this Bangalore. And this is the same in all the other cities. 
with 500 mm of the rainfall if it is harvested collected and reused properly there is enough and more water for what is required for the city still we are starving for water we have virtually fought wars interstate hope you have not forgotten the days when we had you know virtual war with uh, tamil nadu or kaveri we are heading towards that they say that it's very oftenly used that if there is a third world war it will be for water and who else know it better than people of karnataka you know we have got problems with uh, andhra for Ka krishna we have got problems with kaveri it is, it is same with the countries also like you know we have got over the year, river ravi we have got problem with pakistan over brahmaputra we have got problem with china so each and everywhere there is a water conflict today going on how we can adopt rainwater harvesting and you know we can change the scenario from water distress to water surplus country it is possible if israel can do it for us 100 percent it is possible 10 times better now let us come to how what are the uh, laws in bangalore how you know the government has uh, though uh, made mandatory for rainwater harvesting still why rainwater harvesting is not been very uh, successful next slide please so this is uh, uh, you know you can see the rules according to the bws act of 1972 any house that has got more than 2400 square feet of rooftop area today they have to mandatorily do the rainwater harvesting otherwise they are fined you'll be surprised to know that you know recently i was reading government has collected about 15 crore rupees as fine alone people don't mind paying fine for not doing rainwater but they don't want to implement rainwater and rainwater harvesting is such a wonderful thing You'll be, you'll be surprised to know why it is not been implemented. There are two or three main reasons for rainwater not being made, means is not very popular among the people. One is, you know, the faulty installations, you know, the, when they are installing, though rainwater is uh, not a rocket science, which I always tell, but if you are not at least using a little bit of common sense or, you know, a little bit of your engineering knowledge, then the whole rainwater harvest fail. One is interesting that second and is the use of the faulty filters because uh, you know these days wherever the filters which are available in the market many of the filters more than 95 percent of filters which are available in the market are not self-cleaning you know they need to be maintained after every rainfall which is not happening you know in the houses also and in the public domain also so after one or two rainfall these filters get clogged and you know then the whole rainwater harvesting system is for a toss next slide please here you can see the simplest way of the rainwater harvesting wherein all the downtake pipes are interconnected to a horizontal pipe and these are brought towards the tank you install one filter in between and the filtered water is let into the tank overflow from the tank you can leave it to the bore well or the open wells when you are installing this kind of system one thing you have to be very careful is see when you are putting a vertical pipe as I am speaking to a lot of engineers here, you will all be, you know, knowing that when you are putting a vertical pipe, just clamping it with a C-clamp is more than enough. But what happens is, if you are using the same C-clamp for a horizontal pipe, then the whole system gets failed. Because when you are putting a horizontal pipe, the weight of the pipe, as well as the water, weight of the water when the rain, when it is raining, the weight of the water is on the clamping system. So the clamping system has to be very, very, you know, strong. And these days when we are using these hollow bricks for construction, the, still more it becomes still more important that you know we have to fortify the clamping system so that you know it can take the load of the pipe as well as the weight, weight of the water so that they can, you know they doesn't come off. Majority of the times I, wherever we have seen because of these kind of you know wrong clamps being used, the whole system you know is getting off in one year. That is one of the reason. Next. And second, one of the major uh, problem of the main area is the filters what uh, people are using. In the conventional filters, what you are seeing on the right hand side, what happens is whenever it rains, all dust, debris, everything comes and settles down there. And after every rainfall, you have to manually remove this and throw it out. And because 
you know they are not able to find sediment comes and settles on the top of this kind of conventional filters so they have to be cleaned very frequently otherwise the whole filter system fails uh, you know if you are not able to clean the leaves dust and debris the organic matter starts getting decayed in you know after 45 to 50 minutes of its falling and then the whole whenever when there is a next rainfall the whole you know de uh, degraded material you know happens to pass into the water and then that is the reason you always uh, hear the rain water you have small worms growing or rain water smells believe me my friend rain water is the purest form of water if rain water stored in a tank with a closed cover and where you, you don't allow sunlight and the air you can keep rain water for 100 years there are lot of instances in the india which has been proved in rajasthan and jaisalmer areas where in the olden havelis were hundreds of years old havelis which had rain water tankas and which were closed after 100 years when they were removed and the water was checked the water was you know pure as it was you uh, know when it put so rain water is the purest form of water which can be stored for 100 years without getting contaminated or without you know uh, water getting stale only thing is you have to take care that you know you don't allow light and air to interact with that one next here are the filters you commonly see in the market here if you see at the bottom side you have got a ball wall in all the filters so what happens is whenever it rains all the dust debris come and settle down near the bottom of the filters and every rainfall you have to go and open this ball wall which in our busy schedules we fail to do and if you are this because of this you know accumulation of the dust and debris there if you are not removing after one or two rainfall whole of the pipeline will get choked and then it starts flooding in the roof so that is one of the major reasons why how the rain water harvesting systems have failed next now in india you will find first of its kind filter which are self cleaning maintenance free why it is maintenance free compared to all the other filters which are available in the market these filters are open ended and auto flush out filters wherein what happens is all dust debris everything goes out automatically and the clean water comes on the other side these are the maintenance free filters which have been developed after you know research of last 5 years next in this filter you can see on the left hand side you know the cross section of the filter here all the dust and debris everything falls out automatically and the clean water is coming on the other side one more advantage of this filter is what happens is first 90 seconds of the water goes out you know this filter works on cohesive force and centrifugal force once is once installed for next 30 to 40 years there is no consumables required nothing need to be changed you know so that becomes one of the easiest way to install and it is a retrofit filter so these are the kinds of the filters which are available in the market and they have become very popular today and you know we are, people have started using rain water in a bigger way next next you know today people have understood the importance of the rain water everywhere and you know large industries schools or apartments everybody have started understanding the importance of the rain water and have adopted the rain water rain water is not only doing a by adopting rain water you are not only doing a human service to mother earth by saving water if you take it commercial point also the return of investment on all your investment you do for the rain water harvesting is three hardly three years time you know because the you are saving on your water bill you know at least minimum about 150 days to 180 days with your existing tank you can you know have enough and more water so that you know for those many days you need not buy water from the bwssp or your water supply so that you know you can save on your water bill and this is one time investment you know it can run for at least 25 30 years without any problem next slide please See today, each and every states have started giving you know some perks to adopt rainwater harvesting. This is a slide you can see. It is from the Bhuneshwar, means Orissa, wherein government has made it mandatory for everybody to go for rainwater harvesting. It is not only mandatory; they provide you a subsidy of forty-five thousand rupees if you install rainwater harvesting for your house. We have installed more than two lakh installations in you know Bhuneshwar and around uh, other uh, districts of uh, Orissa. there in you know uh, government is giving you 45000 rupees subsidy to install 
a full fledged rooftop rain water harvesting and then the borewell recharging system so today you know government and is taking up you know more interest you have seen that jal shakti ministry a new ministry has been formed this time wherein they have allocated about more than 3000 uh, crore rupees or you know just create the awareness about the rain water harvesting next slide please next slide yeah one more important aspect uh, is about recharging the ground water what happens is you have seen that ground water is one thing which is falling very you know crucially every year they say the fall is around you know more than half a meter in uh, some places and you know it has uh, in in some of the crucial dark zones it is more than you know 2 meters this is very you know drastically it is going on and at this rate probably uh, we will uh, surpass the rate you know date given by the niti ayog uh, to run out of the water we have to uh, save uh, the run of water because that is a huge quantity of water just if you take one acre of land just for 25 mm you get about 1 lakh liters of water so you know imagine if uh, if you take uh, karnataka's average annual rainfall of about uh, 800 mm of rainfall still you get about 35 lakh liters of water which is you know going waste and generally government next slide please everywhere it is Uh, you can see on the right hand side everywhere government tells that you know we have to go for pits make a pit of about 15 to 20 feet then fill it with gravel and uh, you know brick bats and all and then leave the water but i don't know when in by our last 20 years experience we have seen these kind of pits help us only to recharge the subsurface and if we had wells around this would have been the best option because subsurface recharge you know it could recharge the subsurface if you have the well then if you are able to remove the water again and use it then this is the best system but now because we have forgotten the wells you know we have forgotten our old knowledge you know our forefathers were more knowledgeable in uh, water front than what we are today you know they had enough and more water those days when uh, kempe gowda ji built this bangalore he, they say that there were about 970 lakes here you know today in the name of you know advancement or in the name of you know you know we calling ourselves as more intelligent we have closed those lakes and made them as you know industries or bus stands and railway station our own uh, realistic bus stand is kanpapadi kere and our uh, stadiums and our stadiums all were kere means lakes today we thought that you know, we don't need this because in 1970 the borewelli karana started generally means it is the those period that you know we started drilling the borewell and today we will be surprised to know that we have got more than 22 lakh borewells in and around bangalore so where we are heading towards you know if we are able to put this kind of straws into the mother earth in this small area and if you are extracting water without recharging them how many days do you think because in the earth crust there is no mechanism to produce water we yeah, whatever the water which has taken millions of year to go and accumulate there we are just putting the motors and extracting that is the reason out of 10 borewells as i said earlier six borewells fail and then hardly two remain after one year so this is what is happening so what will happen to the next generation like me and ashok sir have completed half of our life and hardly left with some few years to go but what happens to the next generation what happens to your son your grandson you know and my young engineers who are listening to us so what will happen to you you know next they say that you know according to the bbc report and a niti ayog they say that bangalore will be the, the second city in the world to run out of the water and that to not very far it is 2025 they say 50% of the population will have to be evacuated imagine what will happen to the this you know high costing uh, apartments and uh, high costing land all this when we don't have water you can you imagine one day without water you know if you go to sarjapura area and the north bangalore the water tankers today 1 kL of water is charged 200 rupees means the tanker is charged somewhere around 1000 rupees if this is the state do you think we can buy water at that rate and can we survive it is really you know impossible to think of you know i have seen in sarjapur where they had uh, made singer swimming pools Uh, during the sale of the apartments today those swimming pools are used to store rain water we have converted one of the swimming pool you will be surprised to know to you know store the rain water 
that is the stage we are heading towards now coming back to the this one you know i was talking to you about the recharging pits so recharging pits doesn't help to recharge your borewell the best example is you have seen lot of lakes around bangalore okay each of the lakes will have 365 days water you can see like if you take in the south bangalore we have got edur lake if you go to the north bangalore then we have got hebal in the center we have got sanki tank you know and halsur lake and all these lakes have got water for 365 days they are deeper of they are deep uh, at least minimum of 25 to 30 feet minimum they are deep still then if our recharge pits could have helped you know as told everywhere you know then the borewells drilled next to these uh, lakes we should have got 5 inches of water but that is not so if you go to the sanki tank in the walking track of the sanki tank there are borewells which are dried up that means to say the water which is stored in the subsurface is not penetrating down to the aquifer from where we are drawing the water in the borewells because of this you know clay mix soil at the top you know which goes about 20 to 60 or 80 feet and then sometimes then we have got hard rock which is not allowing the water to penetrate so next next slide please yeah so what happens is with our continuous uh, research we developed one system called vivar injection well which is developed by our company formland rainwater harvesting system in this vivar injection well what we do is we do a geophysical survey first and identify the first permeable zone you know the first permeable zone after this you know overburden of clay and rock and go to the first permeable zone where we find fractures or you know we have got sandy loam soil or weathered rocks so we drill it up to that level 8 and 1/2 inches borewell is drilled to that depth and once the 8 and 1/2 inches borewell is drilled then then we have uh, you know we use one special component called vivar screen and this vivar screen is fixed at the bottom one and it is connected to the pipe which is perforated zigzag perforated high density polyethylene in 8 and 1/2 inches uh, drilling we just put 5 inches pipe you know which is perforated and rest the space in between the 5 inches pipe and the uh, 8 and 1/2 inches drilling we fill it with pebbles and then we create this kind of structure you can see a structure over here kind of a well kind of a system and this in this well we keep this whole well empty generally in the pits they ask you to fill up the brick bats and then you know, fill it up but we keep this whole well empty and only at the top level what we do is we will put the filtration media like the filtration media what we do is we fortify this filtration media with charcoal chlorinated activated carbon silica sand gravel and you know pebbles and then this is connected to one of the silt traps you know we make silt trap which is about 10 feet depth and this silt trap is connected to the filtration media so the water is allowed to enter to the silt trap first and from there because of the siphoning effect this water will enter into the main injection well get filters through this filtration media then goes and joins the well the empty well so this empty well act as one as storage and second is it will create the kind of the water column you know to push the water into the deeper aquifers so if you measure the uh, you know uh, pressure at the bottom you will find that four bar pressure or to six bar pressure that is created at the bottom so with that pressure it opens up all the you know uh, dry joints and cracks and the water is stored there next we have installed this more than 18000 of such injection wells throughout the country and you know even in the dried bore wells have been rejuvenated you know we have seen that you know because as i told you there is a huge potential of the surface runoff water here in this slide you can see uh, the if it would have rained the all the water would have gone you know down and our borewell is at this right hand corner yeah you can see this borewell is at the right hand corner so we installed one injection well system and what happened was you know all this water which would have otherwise gone waste and caused some water logging at the, some you know low, lowest low lying area we allowed this water to go into the silt trap and from the silt trap this water is allowed to go to the injection well generally from a drinking water borewell we do injection well which is about 15 to 18 feet away from that and then go, you know as i said earlier this water is allowed filtered through the filtration media it is allowed to go to the first permeable zone thereafter it gets filtered through the earth crust and then reaches the aquifer you will not believe if i tell you 1 meter by 1 meter of you know compressed earth is the best filter in the world no other filtration unit can match that kind of you know filtration unit 
So when the water is filtering through the earth crust, because we are uh, water, our borewells are 800,000 feet deep, and we are just leaving this at the first permeable zone, which we, you know, generally have seen that it get uh, we it, we get that first permeable zone at the uh, depth of about 140 feet to 240 to 50 feet, depending upon the different zones. Next slide, please. Uh, here in this slide, you are seeing, you know, two rigs. You'll be surprised to know that these are the first two rigs in the world which has been developed not to remove the water. Generally, if you see a bore, bore uh, uh, rig, it is to remove the water. But these are the first two rigs which are specially developed, uh, wherein uh, these are meant only to recharge the water, you know, not to remove a single drop of water. So uh, these are the special equipments which have been developed. So, you know, you have a scientific methodology to recharge the Groundwater. Next slide, please. Uh, these kind of uh, recharge wells, you know, are used both in the urban and uh, you know, rural areas. You can see high-rise apartments have been using this injection well to recharge their bore well. Uh, these uh, have been found a very great acceptance in avoiding the water logging. Also, you know, these days uh, we have means I'll I'll explain it in my coming slides. These kind of injection wells have now been used in urban areas in the cities where there is a lot of water logging. You can see in, if, you know, in Bangalore, if it just rains about 40, 50 mm, the whole of the Bangalore is flooded. Everywhere there is water stagnation and uh, majority of the water stagnation in the low lying area where there is a uh, you know, loss of life and property. <laughs> Next slide. <laughs> These have been you know, proved and tested in the, each and every department of government of Karnataka and India. Uh, majority of the uh, has been in the pilot project, it has been taken, then they have installed it and once they were successful, they were replicated in the other areas. Next slide, please. This is one of the beautiful case studies uh, of one Mr. Betamaraya, a former uh, in near Tumkur. You know, uh, so here what happened was when we met one, uh, you know, uh, Secretary uh, Sri Navin Raj Singh, sir, wherein he said that, uh, you know, uh, I see a lot of good presentation from you, but I want to see your, uh, what, how it happens in the ground uh, reality. What is the ground reality? So we were provided with uh, one dried borewell of this farmer. Uh, his, uh, he had about three borewells in his, uh, this one, all of them had dried. His children's, because there was no water available and this land was uh, totally dry, so their children's had moved to the cities to work and earn. So we took up that borewell and then, then we recharged. Fortunately, we had two very good monsoons after the recharge and uh, we could, you know, recharge the dried borewell. You can see this was photo was taken in a deep summer, only his land is green. And rest you can see on the backdrop all you know dried uh, this one because this water table came up we could uh, uh, you know uh, implement you know solar pumping system because the water table was up because if there is a deep uh, borewell deep uh, water table then still we have got we don't have sufficient uh, pumps which can lift water from very deeper aquifer so because the water table come uh, table came up we could install this solar panel also and then drip irrigation and sprinkler system was uh, provided and you know it was a very successful uh, story thereafter we got a lot of appreciation from the sun and you know he always used to uh, promote these kind of uh, technologies you know uh, and a lot of experiments were done next slide please this was the appreciation letter appreciation letter uh, issued by uh, Sri Navin Raj Singh, sir. Next. Next. You know, in uh, and, uh, slide before, please. No, no. Yeah, yeah. A lot of uh, industries have gone for rooftop rainwater harvesting, wherein, you know, they are using this rooftop rainwater even for drinking with, you know, a small uh, filters adopted. You can see here on the left hand side, all the water is collected, passed through the rainy filters. Then it comes and then we have got activated charcoal filters uh, installed here. And these waters are being used for drinking. You know, this is one of the installation on uh, Khanija Pawan on Race Coast Road. Next slide, please. In majority of the rural areas in their drinking water uh, projects, uh, this injection wells were adopted. Uh, in Chamraj Nagar, where we installed about more than 240 injection wells, 
uh, when we had applied for earthcare award in uh, earthcare award for times of india whole team of about 12 members uh, from which included eminent scientists and you know from the different walks of life they came and visited chamrajnagar to find out we had done this uh, uh, recharging installations about 240 in the year 2010 and they came we had applied in the, in the year 2012 then they had come and you know visited that uh, chamras nagar they could they were surprised to find out that only those bore wells because there was a drought in the two years continuous drought and scanty rainfall in those uh, areas of chamras nagar so it was found that only those injection bore wells which had injection wells were working and you know we got about five lakh rupees cash price for that uh, um, project which we had done uh, from times of india uh, next and then these were you know you know implemented and extended to more villages because you know there was a uh, success uh, stories uh, were there huge success stories next next this is how here you can see this these are in the major it industries which have got very big campuses so what happens is because majority of their campuses have got buildings and then paved area only means uh, uh, so what happens is huge water from these campuses goes out used to go out you can see the swells here so we installed these injection wells in the swells so that you know this water whatever their campus water is there which doesn't go out. so means the campus becomes zero discharge campuses one of the campuses uh, in the software park we did it in chennai their 40 percent of their requirement annual requirement is met by the rainwater alone and you will be surprised to know that campus has got 25,000 seats. With 25,000 seats when with their you know staying facilities and all, still they could uh, do that. Uh, 20 means 40 percent of their annual requirement can be met by rainwater alone, and they recharge the groundwater water in such a way that you know the lot of water was available there, and there whatever the water which was falling in the campus is not allowed outside. Here also you can see this water from the roof is brought and then we created large tanks. And inside, uh, you know, the huge tanks have been created where this water, this is about 3.25 lakh liters tank. This tank built by us only with a very low cost uh, tank. It is a low cost technology. And then these waters are filtered through the silica sand activated carbon filtered and stored here for the reuse. Next. Here you can see this uh, campus is about 3,60,000 square feet of roof area. That means to say for just 25 mm of rainfall, you will get about 7.5 lakh liters of water. Here you can see all these downtake pipes were joined together and then they were brought uh, to a common point and filters were fit and this, this water was stored uh, and for the reused. So you know they had enough and more water uh, there so that you know they, they were thinking of you know giving it to the tankers or selling it to the tanker fellows. So much of water was getting collected in a small rainfall. Next. Here one more thing we'll have to because uh, uh, we are all having you know a lot of engineering students here. One more thing during installation we have to take care of this is you have to provide a proper you know you know overflow pipe means you can see here in the first you can see a overflow pipe this will act as a air vent also because when you are running a pipe very long there is tendency that air blockage will happen because we need some air outlet air vents you know so this act as air vent also and then this act as you know overflow pipe also because these days what happens because of the change in the climatic conditions there are you know intensity of the rainfall is very heavy now people generally you know if you go and talk to our you know elderly people they say hey, now the rains have come down rains are not coming you know in our times it used to rain so much if you go to the meteorological department and check the data you'll be surprised to know that you know not even a single this one yeah, mm of rainfall has come down in fact some areas rainfall have increased but what has happened you know what they are telling is also not lies but what has happened is because of the change in the climatic conditions the intensity of the rainfall has increased now whatever the rainfall in my childhood days i could see you know if it is rainfall it is you know a minimum three months of rainfall every day it used to rain you know you used to get small rainfalls you know slow rainfall but now what has happened is it will rain you have seen rainfall in bangalore you know recently we saw suddenly in the evening it will come you know heavy rainfall so your quota your total totally smashed 
but what happens is when there is a rainfall heavy intensity of the rainfall it, it is one is that you know you are not able to store the water second is that when there is a heavy intensity there is a large runoff water will not percolate though our you know annual tally annual total tally gets tallied but still you know we will be having lack of water next slide please here also you can see this is a garment industry where they required huge water and they wanted you know demineralized water they were spending a lot of uh, uh, money on their you know processing of the water because of the dyeing for dyeing and all they require demineralized water so rain water being the purest form of the water with tds of just 35 as good as your, any of your ro water and uh, you know without any minerals so you know all the rooftop we can see they are connecting all the rooftop all their roof because they have a huge roof areas you must have seen you know garment industries and all where they have got about 3000 people working and you know, huge sheds they have all this water is brought here and then uh, when the, this water is conveyed to the one jack well system or a pumping well a well is made here about about 15 feet and all this water from the jack well is pumped to the filter here you can see these are the customized filter which can and take the load from you know 50 meter cube to 500 meters 500 meter cube is you know 5 lakh liters per hour that kind of filters can be customized and then this water is fed into the tank for their reuse next here you can see what we have done is you know uh, uh, generally what is happening is world over they have changed from pvc pipe to uh, to hdp pipe because they say that pvc pipe is carcinogenic to supply you know drinking water so in the world over they have changed to the high density polyethylene pipe here you can see these are gray color you know high density polyethylene pipe and their life also is more means they have got life span of at least 40 50 years and here whatever you can see in the here we install water meters we have installed water. you know you can see at the end of the left hand side that first figure yeah we have installed yeah these are the water meters because unless we measure it we cannot save it so water meter has been installed one is to calculate what is the return on investment how much water is saved and then you know because you know it gives us a key, you know what kind of water what kind of investment we have made and and how we are getting back the returns you can see this air vents also and there is a huge piping system this kind of the air vents have been put so this is how a typical uh, installation takes place in a bigger uh, campuses where you have to store huge water and reuse the water you have seen on the right hand side there is a jack well system with a pumping system you know uh, you know with all the ball walls these are all customized uh, designs which we have installed uh, in uh, many of our uh, uh, industries throughout the country next slide please this is a part of uh, the same installation wherein you can see on the right hand side Uh, these are the v wire screen horizontal v wire screen so that when the water is coming all the leaves and floating particles is uh, uh, now stays here only the clean water comes from the jack well system from the jack well system this water is pumped to the filtration unit and from the filtration unit this water is pumped for the utility next slide please in the smaller uh, areas when you have got smaller rooftop uh, then what you happens is you can see the filters availability are for, you know about four five uh, types of the filters are available uh, depending upon the roof areas but when you have got larger roof areas you can put parallel filters like this here uh, you know in, in this figure you can see about uh, six filters means that means to say this is about covering about 30000 square feet of roof area each filter can cover about 5000 square feet of roof area so about 30000 square feet of roof area this is covering all this clean water is connected to a single line the waste water line is connected on the other side and also then you can save uh, a huge quantity of water means 30000 square feet of roof area is about 30 lakh liters of water annually So that's a huge saving. Next, we have installed about more than three thousand schools in Karnataka alone. Here you can see, you can see a hand pump, a low color that is a hand pump. Wherein you know here, what happens is we install this gutter with you know special clampings, and then the filter was installed, and then under this hand pump we constructed a tank, and then we provided a hand pump. We provided a hand pump because we wanted children to earn water, not to get water. what happens is when we are getting water we will not know the value of the water so we wanted to inculcate the value of the water into the children's mind because each child is a each family you know one child is one family in the coming days so we said ki you know the knowledge of saving water should come from them 
there. So that's why this water we provided hand pump for a uh, you know, different type, innovative type. We said ki we should provide them hand pump. And so the, whenever they want, they should pump, use some energy to get the water. Next. This is again about 3,600 schools in Assam. We you know, installed this rainwater harvesting system. Here also what we did was on a platform. At height, we created about 10,000 liters of tank and then the filter was fitted at the top. And then this water was used for the uh, schools, there for their cooking of the midday meals. What happens is in Assam, though they have got heavy rainfall, but what happens is, uh, you know, there is a lot of iron content in the groundwater. So that becomes a huge uh, problem for them and the filtration unit. So this was the easiest and the cheapest available source for them because that rains about 3000 mm of rainfall and it rains about more than 100 and, uh, 150 to 160 days of rainfall they get. So it was sufficient for them for their uh, daily needs you know, so that they could use the rainwater and avoid this filtration cost and the huge invest capex investment for and the maintenance cost for the filters. Next. These are the few photographs of where household people have installed the rainwater harvesting and how they uh, each one has got one story how they uh, used to buy tankers and how the, their water was uh, you know the quality of their borewell water was bad you know after mixing this rainwater because of the dilution effect the quality of the water got improved so we have got thousands of stories to tell if you allow me to speak i can speak for another at least 10 12 hours and keep on talking about it so many uh, you know uh, uh, successful stories we have to share with you next this is in the konkan railway in the konkan railway from madgaon to you know uh, mangalore in the whole of this area, they get a huge rainfall, about 3,000 mm, is, I think, average annual rainfall there. But what happens is, during the summer, in the, from the month of the February, because they are very near to the sea, the seawater ingress happens. Or all their bore wells and the, you know, open wells start getting saline water. So we installed, we started installing these kind of the structures and you know, we tried to push back the rainwater into the open wells and all. So because of that, you know, the seawater started, you know, st ingressing stopped. This is what was, you know, first installed in Tamil Nadu also during Jailalitha's uh, time when she first started this, you know, uh, recharging pits in that triplicane and all those areas, you know, that uh, sea, sea side built, where the seawater started coming in, all the borewells and the wells started getting water. So that is the reason first rainwater harvesting in a massive way was started by Sri Jailalitha. Uh, to you know, put that water back into the earth so that you know that we can avoid that sea water getting ingress. So this has been adopted, and still these were adopted long back. You know, still they are working fantastically well. Next, these are the some of the larger industries where they have installed huge buildings. Next, this is one of the unique uh, installation which has happened in uh, Hassan. This is an indoor swimming pool. Here, uh, you'll be surprised to know that there is no water supply to this swimming pool. Swimming pool, a swimming pool without water supply. It is using its own water supply from its roof. They have constructed about 2 lakh liters tank. So all the water from their roof is collected and filtered through the rainy filters. And it comes and stores in this 2 lakh liters tank. And they have got enough and more water you know, than they require. They can They are able to supply to the nearby community so much of water they get from their roof areas. So, you know, this is self-sufficient. If a swimming pool can be a self-sufficient, our houses can also be self-sufficient. As I said, told you earlier, you know, there are so many houses in Bangalore which don't have got any uh, water connection at all. And uh, here, sorry, last slide, please. One more slide. No, no. Ah, yeah. Here you can see this is uh, one of the sites from uh, no, Kumbulgod uh, factory wherein you know they take this rainwater to manufacture whiskey because what happens is they need a lot of processed water for manufacturing whiskey and rainwater being the purest form they can save a lot of cost in processing this water which they take it from the borewell or any other source because they get the purest form of water their processing cost has come down their electricity cost has come down and during the processing generally there is you know because of the high tds 50 percent of the water used to go out no, there was wastage of water but because of this rainwater they constructed four lakh liters tank and put all the roof water from every corner to that tank and then they are using this rainwater for their process of making whiskey 
next one of the more when one more important uh, advantage of uh, this injection well is to you know uh, avoid this water logging uh, problems recently we tried you can see our bbmp commissioner sir in this uh, picture wherein a tanker water was brought in the underpass a v wire injection well was constructed because uh, if you, you must be aware very well aware that during our small rainfall also the first thing is you know all the underpasses in bangalore will choke up you know it will become a, a endangered thing for life and property of the people because of the you know water stagnation there all the vehicles will get damaged people will fall life and property is damaged so now what has happened is we have constructed the injection well in the center of the uh, you know bypasses underpasses and then uh, it was tested you know we got about 10000 liters tanker and this in 7 minutes this 10000 liters could be percolated so thereafter we got a pilot project to install the injection wells in all the underpasses next you can see here you know that how this injection wells in the underpass you can see on the side of the wall how much the water used to be stagnant you know you can see that dirty part so that much of water used to be stagnant here now we did the uh, you know injection well installed here we have got a seal trap system then an oil and grease trap and then we have got the main injection system next slide please you can see here commissioner sir is watching because the water is let from the tanker and how the water is getting percolated into the ground and it has been very successful even during when it rained recently in 4 hours we had 104 mm of rainfall but not even a single drop of water was stagnant in this uh, underpass next next there is a video small video you can see that if it is able to play. see you can see this all this water is coming and uh, they have got a inlet over here and then i can nearby we have got a grease trap so the water is entering here all this water is entering from here and it goes to the seal trap first from the seal trap it is you know allowed to go to the injection well there again it gets filtered and this filter water is you know uh, going to about 240 feet is the zone where there is you know we have found the permeable zone you can see the tanker water is let inside to test this next next slide please this has been very widely accepted uh, in the national highways also this kind of injection well has been installed you can see our minister for transport shri nitin gadkari after we met him in a, one of the seminars and now we were promoted to do lot of injection wells uh, then now uh, our hk patel sir who was the minister for rural development in government of karnataka then we had the uh, opportunity to meet him and lot of borewells of the farmers were rejuvenated next slide please these are the various uh, top level government officers of uh, you know secretaries at uh, you know top level indian uh, government government of india's top secretaries and uh, you know different types of demonstrations next next and we have got one more uh, this one uh, we have got a research station at chikmagalur where we train the people who really want to be a water warriors who really want to implement this kind of you know rainwater harvesting system so we train the people free of cost we make them as one of the water warriors because today it is the need of the hour that you know all the young engineers learn to make you know uh, self sustaining houses which is very very important because tomorrow water air and you know if you are not able to make you know houses which are self sustaining these houses will be of no use so we have to plan these things wherein we re reuse the grey water we re we use the rain water and you know make these houses self sustain so what we do is we give them a cash crash course train the young budding engineers or anybody who want to really take it up as a profession there is a huge scope is scope in this uh, profession i want to share with this young people who are listening here you know you can take it as you know as your career wherein you can make name fame and money you know you will and you will be doing a human service to the mother earth and the future generations to come it is one business which can give you satisfaction for doing something for my fellow being i uh, i will be very happy if at all you can take this as a profession uh, at least in your uh, days when you are building buildings or some of your architects you plan that you know there is enough and more facilities available to use the rain water 
so that you know you don't allow this water to go into the roads and cause flooding flooding and then you can save lot that much of water for your future generations to come next slide please they they, they can entrepreneurs yeah entrepreneurs we can develop entrepreneurs who can you know be the future of the country and you know we can make the people you know you know we can uh, you know those who are predicted that india will be water stressed or water starved we can prove them wrong in next 5 years i'm very confident if we all join hands together if each one of us understand our responsibility towards water india will be water surplus you know we will be able to supply water to the neighboring countries as uh, you know israel does that is the potential of the uh, rain water here uh, but only thing is you know that each and every person has to understand his role in conserving water in say i mean use reusing the water you know if we do that probably you know we can prove everybody who has predicted wrong and you know make india water surplus because water is life and without water there cannot be any means you know it will be such a bad uh, state we cannot just imagine to spend one day without water next slide please sir next slide <laughs> thank you i have included thank you sir thank you so much okay next. any questions are there i would love to answer sir there will sir for the